by car, Timex 1 radio show. Good day, A. This is Sedlow, and welcome to the DCS Mission Editor. Today, I'm going to talk about a feature added to the last uh, DCS update, um, and that is the ability to have a radio subtitle directly on a radio transmission action. Okay, what does that mean? Um, all right, in the core DCS game, when you're communicating with uh, an AI AWACS or wingman or tower or whatever, um, the radio subtitle would appear in the upper left side of the screen. It would be white text with no background, and that's what you had. Now in the mission editor, there's a radio transmission action, but there was no way to put that text in the upper left. In fact, there wasn't a way to put a text in the action at all. You'd have to do a separate action, which would be a, a text to a uh, message to unit, message to coalition, message to all. And you could write your text there, but it would be in the upper right side with a dark black background. Um, so there'd be two different areas of the screen that you'd have to look at. Now, um, some people decided to do it that way. I have it on the right. Um, some of the other mission makers preferred to have everything in the upper left, but there was no uh, inherent way to do that. So what they would do would be, um, they would select, put an aircraft off to the side somewhere, probably put it up high, 36,000 feet. Okay, it's a C-130. Just we'll play along. Um, and you do a bunch of triggered actions and you would go triggered action, perform command, transmit message. And there you would select your audio and then uh, you would do your subtitle here. Now I'll just go off screen here, copy and paste my subtitle and that's what it would be. So you'd have that You'd always have to name it TX1 or whatever. And uh, so every radio transmission would have to be this way. So like you would do another one and your next message might be the same message. And this would be TX2 and so on and so on and so on. I'm just going to do one more because I want to show you something. One of the drawbacks of doing it this way. So you'd have uh, three transmissions there. <clears throat> How would you do it in the mission? Okay, let's just go here, make a fake trigger. You would go AI task push and you'd select transmission number one. And then your next transmission would be transmission number two, so on, so on, so on. Okay, a bit of a, a weird way to work around it um, there were some problems with it in that if something happened to this aircraft, if it was shot down or crashed or glitched out somehow, you would lose all of your radio transmissions. Um, not good. The other thing is, say you um, say you didn't want transmission number two in here or something happened and you deleted this one. Watch what happens to number three. Delete number three becomes number two. And the way the scripting engine uh, used this is they use just the number. So when you're expecting transmission number three to happen, it wouldn't happen because three became two. Clear as mud? All right. So now Eagle Dynamics in the last update added a uh, feature where we could put a subtitle directly in the radio transmission action. Um, now, let's go back even a little further here. It used to be you would put your radio transmission would come from a zone. You call it radio zone and it would come from a point on the ground. Um, not really ideal because say if it Put your thing here and you're down low level on the other side of these mountains here um you wouldn't hear it because of line of sight plus they added this radio degradation which i think is way too excessive still but 
hey, we're working on it. So Eagle Dynamics, a year or two, maybe three ago, um, said that, uh, or it gave us the ability to link trigger zones to units. So we would link this to Arial 1-1, which is our unit. The cool thing about that is that zone follows you all around. And when you make a radio transmission, it comes from the zone, which is directly on you. Okay, that saves a lot of the degradation. There's still some there, which probably shouldn't be, but um, it's much better. All right, so how do we use this trigger thing? Let's uh, delete these test triggers. Let's do what we always do. We make a mission start trigger and we do flag number one, just because it's easier to reference it that way. All right, let's do this here. TX1 and we will say uh, time since flag, time since flag one is 10 seconds. We are going to make a radio transmission. And where are we here? Radio transmission. Look down here, there's this new block where you put your subtitle. So let's uh, grab the audio. It's going to come from the moving zone, radio zone. So we're going to AM transmission. We're not going to loop it. 305.0. We're going to call this TX1 and we're going to paste our radio text there. Let's get rid of the squelch effects because it's not great. Get rid of mic effects as well. So 10 seconds after mission start, we should have this appear. Let's uh, try it. Get into the old Viper here. Uh, it's the 27th of October today. Um, game three of the World Series is tonight in Los Angeles. Who are you going for? Yep, of course the Blue Jays, right? Nobody likes the Dodgers. Well, let's just say I like the Dodgers. They're a great, strong team, but I always go for the underdog. And if it's a Canadian-based team, all the better. All right, here we are. Approaching Groom Lake. 10 seconds after start, we should have the message appear in the upper left. 9, 10. Departure, Grim 1-1, one, one, to you, pass 800 for 2,000. Nice. Grim 1-1, one, one, departure, radar contact, climb 18, 9,000, passing 3,000, turn left, direct the call. Pull up. Grim 1-1, climb 9,000, passing 3, left, direct the call. What's that MiG-29 doing over there? Ah, it's already been released. Anyway, um, that is basically what I wanted to show you. Love Nevada. It's such a good map as it is right now. I would love to see it refreshed a little bit to the standards of uh, the modern maps. Not sure if that'll happen, but uh, if it does, it's got my vote. Hope you have a great day.